Can't sleep. No. Just people watching. It's 6 a.m. I would have thought you had enough of that at work already. Speaking of which... All right. Have fun. Randall literally just called me. I know. Amanda? Sam, it's fine. I love you, you know. Morning, Tommy. It's a surprise to see you out here, Tommy. Although, I can't blame you, it is a beautiful day. Yes. It's very beautiful. Dr. Pierce? Yes, Tommy? A man has come to visit you today. A man? What man? understand a word of this shit. You are not supposed to, Detective. Those are advanced psychology journals, not colouring books. Yeah, well, I can't get the hang of those things either. How much longer is this going to take? I thought I reached the doctor's office. Am I still in the waiting room? I'm sure Sam is just held up, Detective. He'll be with us shortly. Now, if you'll just take a seat. Hey, you're the boss. You wanted to see me, sir? Who's Sam? I'd like to introduce you to Robert Swade. Detective Robert Swade, Doctor. Yes. Well, Detective Swade here has insisted about coming into the Institute to see you personally today. Ah, planning on enrolling here as a patient? How can I help you, Detective? Sam, today Detective Swade here has brought a patient into the Institute by the name of David Holland. He was involved in a particularly nasty car accident a few months back which led to someone's death. The police believe... We believe he could have been responsible. When you say responsible, we believe he caused the crash deliberately. Uh, we were hoping you could talk to him. Judge his mental state and find out if he could have been capable of well, that sort of thing. I can try, sir, but I have an awful lot on at the moment. Uh, uh, consider your schedule cleared, Sam. Obviously, a police matter such as this takes greater precedence. Well, in that case... What can you tell me about Holland, Detective? I think that he's a fucking end case. And you believe he was complicit in the accident? Let's just say... Evidence is mounting. And you're hoping he'll open up to me about what he's done? In a nutshell, you need him to confess in your sessions, or whatever you call them. Get him to open up about his past. If he mentions causing the car accident, 
We can get him off your hands. I can try, but I can't promise it won't be difficult. <laughs> Funny, isn't it, how a century ago, if we had evidence against a weak person like Holland, we could just swoop in and nab him. But now, we probably have to tiptoe around them and treat them like they're living in the goddamn Ritz. I'm not sure what you're getting at, Detective. This is a hospital, not a hotel. Our patients are merely very ill people. <laughs> Weakness doesn't enter into it. Ill? You can only die. You see, these people, they came into this world with exactly the same urges as the rest of us. Because, I mean, let's face it, we all feel like killing our family or friends sometime or another. But notice how they're the ones who get the, um, what do you call it, the, uh, insanity plea? I hate to disappoint you, Detective, but not all of us have those sorts of urges. Sure. <laughs> What's this, Doc? Play a little mid-morning Beethoven here for the freaks or something. It's Claude Debussy, actually. Good day, Detective. Very well. Go up to Harlow. Dr. Pierce? Well, that put a damper on my morning. Sam, I'm sorry. You just barged in here. There was nothing I could do. I understand, sir. Don't worry. Still, I'm sure this is in everyone's best interests. Let me talk to the nurses and we'll get the interview rooms prepared for your sessions with Holland. <laughs> Psychologist to interrogate right under a morning. What <laughs> Was there ever really any difference? <laughs> it's Stanley Randall. What is with the music? David? David? David Holland? You wanted to borrow my partner? Could have just said so. I'll bear that in mind. What's with the babysitter? That's Dr. Harlow. He's the head of the Institute and my boss. And incidentally, Randall will be sitting in our little sessions from now on. You should be grateful to him. He was the one that entertained your demands for the music. And my name is Dr. Sam Pierce. But I don't want you to think of me as a doctor. I want you to think of me as your friend. Can you do that for me, David? Do you like classical music? David Holland, age 24. You've been refusing to tell the police anything else. Why? I have an idea, Dr. Pierce. Go on. Every time you ask me a question, I get to ask you one. Very well. I'll go first then, shall I? Why, of course. Why do you think you're here, David? For the past few weeks, I've been feeling angry. Very angry. Angry at the world, angry at the people, and angry at myself, Dr. Pierce. 
It was lucky that I was arrested when I was. Before I did something I really regret. <laughs> like decapitating a squirrel or something. It's my turn. Tell me, Dr. Pierce. Do you live alone? No. I live with my wife. We've been living together for two years now. Do you live alone? Yes. For many years now. Let's just say I've always known the dance, but never had the right partner. Tell me about your wife, Dr. Pierce. Is she... beautiful? Yes, she is. I met her here at the Institute when she was just a trainee psychoanalyst. And do you miss her? Miss her? Why would I miss her? I imagine working here keeps you very busy. I'm just going for a coffee, Sam. Excuse me a moment. Of course. David, if I were to ask you about a car accident that occurred six months ago, would you be able to remember that for me? I wouldn't trust him if I were you. Who? Randall? Good day, Dr. Pitts. He's astonishing, really. I thought I'd seen them all. I only wish I had more time with the poor bastard. What are your thoughts on the matter? I think we need some more brandy. Holland's clearly got a textbook case of paranoid schizophrenia. Although, it could just as easily be the disorganized form. But he's clearly got issues stemming from childhood. He mentioned you, incidentally. Me? Hmm. You went out to get some coffee, although he didn't say much after that. What did he say? Oh, just some nonsense about the fact that I shouldn't trust you, but he's clearly got some trust issues. I better be going. It's getting late. What? Oh! Last track of time. Have a good night, sir. You have yourself a good night, Sam. Keep insisting on watching this. Because, for once, I'd like to make it to the end of a film without one of us falling asleep. You're not falling asleep, are you? It's late. We only get to see one another at night. It's like we're vampires or something. Oh, I might go to bed. Oh, come on. Stay up with me. I'll fix us some coffee or something. You in? Coffee it is then.
Ocean. She's fine. How are you? I'm fine. Just fine. I didn't know you could draw. Sure beats dancing. <laughs> You've changed your tone. May I have a look? No. Oh. Very well. I'd like to pick up where we left off yesterday. Last time we spoke, you mentioned something about a car accident. No, Dr. Pierce. Last time we spoke, you said something about a car accident. But of course, they want you to make me confess, don't they? But confess to what, exactly? To intentionally causing the accident. I don't know the specifics, but I know that much. Someone died in that accident. Do you remember who it was? Do you remember the accident six months ago? Did you intentionally try to hurt anyone? I don't want to talk about it. No. Let's talk about your wife instead. What's her name? Tell me, Dr. Pierce. What does she smell like? David. I've always wondered, when you're a psychoanalyst, or a psychotherapist, or whatever you guys are, do you still get treated like one when you get hitched? Does she tell you all her problems, no matter how small? Does she tell you her dirty little secrets? Or does she keep them hidden away under lock and key? Speaking of secrets, if you want to hear any more of mine, well, you know what they say. Three's a crowd. So, could you give us a minute? Do you think I make him feel uncomfortable? David, you're making me feel uncomfortable. I have that effect on people. I'm not what you'd call blind date material. What's he been saying? Nothing yet. Just more... rambling. I'm telling you, Doc, this guy, he's like... something out of a goddamn horror movie. Patience, detective. We're making progress. Are you sure about that? You know, I'm getting sick and tired of this place. David, what do you remember about the accident? Fire. Glass. Someone screaming. I've got it. If I make you feel uncomfortable, then we should go out for dinner. Just the three of us. You, 
me and your wife. What was her name again? Amanda. I never mentioned her name. What do you know? A lucky guess. How did you... Amanda? Amanda? In here. Are you okay? Uh-huh. Why wouldn't I be? Oh. It's nothing. It's just one of my patients. Got to me today. That's a first. Oh, by the way, I love your drawings. What drawings? The ones you left in the kitchen. Didn't know you could draw like that. You're quite the dark horse, Sam. This is of my wife. It's a chain, really. What? It's a chain. You observe me, and I observe her. Not that I mind, you understand. I am in need of a new partner, after all. Sam! He's been in my house! He's been in my goddamn house! What are you talking about? He's been in my house, leaving pictures, and... I was just minding my own business, and he attacked me like a wild dog. Sam! My office, Dr. P.S. Now! <laughs> Amanda! <laughs> Amanda! <laughs> Here, get this down, you. He was in our house. <laughs> Let's not jump to conclusions. He sketched Amanda, Randall. Amanda? He's seen her. How else could he have drawn her? And he was outside the house last night. Sam. Be reasonable. He's a patient. No patient can leave the Institute without permission. You know that. Obviously this whole Holland thing has put you under too much pressure. That's probably my fault. I've been working you too hard. Uh, sir. Take the day off, Sam. You look like you need it. We'll resume your sessions on Monday. Say hi to Amanda for me. Will you, Sam? Sure.
To listen to me. You need to listen to me very carefully. It was you? You were the one that was in my house last night? Yes, I think we could agree that something's not quite right here. Wouldn't you, Sam? I've been keeping an eye on you to make sure that you were okay. Okay? Okay? Of course I'm not okay. My, my house, it, it's different. It's filled with those damn pictures. I can explain that. Look, Sam, things have gone too far. This David Holland thing, it's gone out of control. Do you realise how much I've sacrificed for you? Do you know how many strings I've had to pull to keep this hidden? Convincing the staff that you were safe enough to live outside of a padded cell. It wasn't easy. It was a nightmare. And keeping the police off your back after the accident. Accident? But... Holland was in the accident. Of course you're going to jail. We can't hold them off forever. But I tried. What? Things have spiralled out of control. I'm sorry. Maybe I held myself accountable because of what I did. Maybe that was the trigger. What do you mean, what you did? Sam. I... with Amanda? Yes, I did. This isn't the first time you've told me, is it, sir? No, Sam, it's not. But as I said then, I'm not proud of myself. And maybe this is what started the whole thing off in the first place. Sam, there are things we need to know. About the car crash, about whether you caused it. You told me as much in your sessions, but I'm not responsible. You did what you did because of you, Sam, and not me. I tried to fix you, but you're just too far gone. You're a lost cause. Shut up. I'm sorry, Sam, but you're very sick. And with any luck, that should be enough to keep you out of prison. But I won't let you blame me for what's happened. Shut up. I'm sorry, Sam, 
but she was lonely and so was I. You were acting strangely even then, and she needed someone to help her understand what was going on. How was I supposed to know you would try and murder her? Shut up! Oh shit. It's over, Sam. I killed her, didn't I? Yeah. Put your hands on your head and get on the floor. I didn't cause the accident because I wanted to kill my wife. I caused it because I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> I'm still gonna fight back, you know? Really? People like you already do. What? Weak people? Ill people, whatever you call them. Talk about the patients running the asylum. You know, I almost liked David Holland. At least he had a spine. I wonder Amanda decided to slip your boss instead. Ah!